that this is the most challenging year that the club has ever faced. You can see there just how, well, indifferent their start to this season has been. They stopped their run of defeats midweek against Southampton by coming back to earn themselves a point against the Saints. But this is looking like a really tough period for Arsenal, isn't it, Glenn? How do mm. they get themselves out of this? I literally think they got to start right at the beginning, uh, go back to basics, uh, just try to be hard to be beaten. Um, I just think that at the moment their, their issue is no one's scared to play against them. Yeah. Um, I just think they got. I just, and, and when was the last time we'd you know see Arsenal, Southampton, and I think the Arsenal, Southampton, and I think everybody fancied Southampton. Yeah. When yeah. was the last time you'd, you'd think that? You know, it's crazy time. So. I just think they need to get back to basics, you know, really be hard to, hard to be beat, work their socks off and, and occupy the, the, their positions better. You know, we saw them at, at Tottenham, for example, one pass took out like, the whole midfield on three or four occasions. You know, that can't happen. That's not good enough for any position in the league and certainly not for Arsenal. So, lack of discipline there in positional play, lack of discipline as well with a red card. I think they've had seven now in 33 games in the Premier League under Arteta. That's not good enough, is it? No, it's not. Um, I think we should distinguish between the Granit Xhaka red card and the one that Gabriel received, for example. Yeah. Because that was, I think, just a little bit <coughs> unlucky. Yeah. It's silly, though. Silly, but... It's silly. ...inexperienced there, rather than, you know, losing his head. Yeah, I get others, what you mean. Our, yeah. our, our, our guys did. I mean, red cards are sometimes a symptom of a team being a little bit helpless. They do stuff they shouldn't be doing, yeah. whether it's because they're frustrated with the game, whether it's because they make fouls because... You know, they have to make fouls almost because otherwise there's uh, danger happening. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they are sometimes a good sort of mirror of, of what's going on. With Atet at the moment, it doesn't help him that the more experienced players pick up red cards as well. But I don't even know where to begin. I mean, there's so many mm -hmm. things that are not happening for this team. And this is after we all sat here, well, I think most of us, and thought, you know, under Atet, it looks as if Arsenal are going in the right direction mm, again. Yeah. They have an identity, they know what they're doing, there's yeah. a plan here. This was when? Like three months ago only? Yeah. And now it looks as if it's all falling apart. I find it really hard to explain how they've gone mm. from you know, going steadily upward to just kind of crashing down almost in a vertical mm. um, you know, trajectory. So if you were writing an article on them, what would the headline be? Why has it all gone wrong? And then you try to, to find out from people, you know, what mm. they're saying. I mean, I know, speaking to someone at the, um, um, at the backroom staff, somebody quite senior, that they still, both him and they do still enjoy the confidence of the club. They still think these guys can absolutely sort it out. But at the same time, there is a point where if you keep losing, mm. even Arsenal, with, you know, all the confidence that they have in you, will think, you know, we, we, we can't, we can't mm. go on like that. So I mm. think it's getting perilously close mm. to that. If they lose the next three or four games as well. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. And Edu's actually spoke positively this week, hasn't he? And said, you know, these players need time. There's a lot of young players in this squad as well. So do we need to... It's hard because mm. everyone talks about Arsenal. We think about Arsenal as this club that should be in the top six. But mm. when you think about when Arsene Wenger left, things haven't really changed a lot since then. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a big project, isn't it? Yeah, totally. And, and I think that's kind of been like, there's been a few months where it's sort of, they've sort of fallen away from their normal sort of identity in terms of, I wouldn't say that they're, they're full of youngsters. In fact, I think they, their youngsters are actually their best players at the minute. Um, Should they so, play more then? Well, you might as well, lo you might as well lose your youngsters. Yeah. You know, you play the guys with experience and, and they're no better than the kids that are coming through. So, um, you know, Saka's obviously been a, a fantastic highlight for them. Um, but I'm thinking now, looking through their team, who can you sort of point to, to re you know, who can you focus on to sort of get you out of this sort of moment? And I don't know who I'd pick. Well, David Luiz, come on, the other night, didn't he? And he showed leadership qualities, but we know David Luiz, there's an error there, mm. there's a red card there. But, you know, listen to a lot of people tonight, when he come onto the park, he, at least he showed leadership qualities. Mm. Yeah, but his relationship with Arteta apparently isn't the best either. Mm. So that's difficult. But I think, I mean, there's two things. One is Arteta, who's a very, relatively inexperienced manager, trying to, to make the boss, best of a situation that is difficult. But there is also, Jules, I think, where you hinted at a structural issue. Since Wenger's left, mm. and maybe even while he was still there, Arsenal have been, not been able to strengthen financially because they missed out on the Champions League now repeatedly. Then it comes down to maybe getting one or two players in there make the big difference. If you don't get that right, if Pepe, yeah. your 80 million buy, mm. doesn't transform the team, if Partey can't stay fit, doesn't have the impact, 
then you're really struggling because mm. the money isn't available at the moment mm. to buy three or four of these guys every year. So you have to get the recruitment absolutely right, and I'm not sure they have, and that's compounded the issues. Was it right, though, that Aubameyang stayed? He got the new contract. Obviously, since he signed that contract, he'd been on a little bit of a goal-scoring drought. I think it's just been really unlucky for Arsenal as well in that sense. But we did see, let's focus on the positives from the game against Southampton, that Aubameyang back on the score sheet from open play. And it was a very Arsenal-looking goal, if we can call it that. Very Thierry Henry-esque, yeah. the way he finished mm. it. But, I mean, with him, he has to play on the left, which often, which works in some ways, but takes away some of the mm. other things he can bring if he plays through the middle. It would also mean that he's very unprofessional. I don't, I don't want to think that way. Mm. So maybe there are other issues there. But, yeah, it, it, is, it is telling that, you know, Arsenal wanted to keep him at all costs. He was the guy that they wanted to basically build their attack around the next couple of years. And now he looks as if he can't get back to the levels where he was maybe one or two years ago. Mm. That's another issue where, as Arsenal are thinking, oh, no, no, now next year do we have to buy another striker now all yeah. of a sudden mm. because Aubameyang is not, is not doing it. So mm. it's just problem after problem at the moment. Yeah, mm. we could talk, I think we could talk about Arsenal mm. for the whole show. There's so many talking <laughs> points. They did show good character to come back and get that point against Southampton. I'm sure they'll want to use that for this game at Goodison Park against Everton. Everton in the week surprised me, Glenn. I, I really didn't expect this away victory from them against Leicester. Yeah, yeah it's a tough place to go. Um, I think Everton have been one of the standout performers for me, really, in terms of how they set halves and they stayed back in their positions. That allowed Richarlison and Warby to go one on one situations. Alan was in front, so defensively, they didn't move from that five, but Alan got injured and, and he came off. I think it's his hamstring. I don't know if he's fit for this weekend. Gomez, come on. Um, that might be, they'll miss Alan massively. Mm. I think the combination of Allen and Ducouré has mm. made a huge difference for this Everton team because Everton, I think, have been a byword for being flaky in recent years mm. and they're no longer flaky. They have mm. now a solid base. And then you add a bit of stardust, a bit of gold dust on top mm. when James is, is, is able to play or Dominic Covert lewin has really gone to another level, I think, this season. So it's a much more solid team. But you take out one or two of those players and I think the backup, the depth, isn't quite there. That's no. why after that great start, they're back in mid-table now. And I don't think that they can quite keep that momentum from the They moved from to the fifth in days. the week after that win, actually. Yeah. Honestly, it's so tight. I'm looking I mean, at the, the table, table in terms of points. I in mean, terms yeah, of points, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it is so close. Do, do you think they could push for a European spot still? Um, or what, from what we've seen so far this season, from all the teams that are kind of challenging for a European place, are they yeah. still up there? Yeah, I think they are, yeah. I think the, the way they started the season, it, it wasn't a fluke. Um, they were putting in solid performances week in, week out. So um, I think outside what, the top, Top four, yeah, I, I, I think they could do it. Um, they're probably one of the teams right now you'd want to avoid, I, I would imagine. Mm. Who do you think is going to win this one? I'm going to go Everton. Everton. Raph? Can I go for a draw? You can go yeah, for a draw. Yeah, you can go, you for can a go draw. better than you at Raph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob, we'll see your predictions a little bit later on in the show. Do you know what?